Okay, charging the heat pump in winter. Is there any way to effectively do it? Uh, do you just weigh in the charge? Can you use superheat and subcool? Discharge temperature? These are all ways that you could charge these units. However, do they all work? So we're going to spend a little bit of time here fooling with these things, trying to figure out how we can charge a heat pump in the winter time and not end up with either massively overcharged or massively undercharged by the time we get to the summer. First, we're going to start out with weighing in the charge. Okay, here we have a model serial plate. And if you look at it, it says our refrigerant R22 factory charge, 6 pounds, 12 ounces. That does not mean that's what is necccessary for that thing train this is a train unit um, uses uh, that factory charge for a line set up to 25 feet to include the indoor coil others have many other different ways of doing it train has an addition for additional line set uh, to adjust i'll show you a little uh, sheet on that okay next we're going to look at the service facts that come with the train unit and it does give you, it says down there, 6 pounds, 12 ounces uh, on the refrigerant. And on the right-hand side, it has a section liquid line, tubing links, and how, how much refrigerant you need to add for longer line sets. And if the thing is a train or there's something else that comes with the equipment that tells you how long or how much refrigerant you should put in, to account for the length, and of course you measure the length, then you should have a pretty good idea. That's not always the case. In fact, it's commonly not the case. That you don't have the information, or it doesn't have a matching indoor coil, or something like that. So, uh, weighing in the charge can work, but there are limitations on how well it can be done. Okay, here we're seeing a factory installed dryer, and of course the amount of refrigerant that's going to be used in that dryer is figured in with the factory charge of the unit. However, do you know what size that dryer is? Is it 8 cubic inch? It's certainly not 16. It looks like it's about 5, but you don't really know, and a lot of these manufacturers, they're not really interested in telling you, so if I replace that dryer with, say, a 16 cubic inch dryer, then I need to subtract off the size of that dryer. So, how big is it? That's one of the problems you run into. Uh, some of them don't have any dryer at all, and it's pretty easy because then you have to just add the liquid line dryer to the charge. I'm going to give you some numbers on liquid line dryers here right quick. Okay, you can see here I've got a chart. This is a Sporlin chart. And uh, so you've got, say, let's say the 160, the C160, that's 16 uh, cubic inch dryer. Uh, go to R22, it's 10.8 ounces. An 080 right above is 5.6. So if I was to add the dryer, there wasn't a dryer in it, and I added a dryer and it was a 16 cubic inch, I'd add 10.8. Or if it was 4108, 410 I would put a 9.4. So this is uh, what you would add if you are just adding a dryer where there was no dryer before. Otherwise, you're going to have to subtract what you think the dryer was there, or was factory, with the new one. So, conclusion on weighing in the charge is, I can probably get it pretty close. I can't always guarantee I'm going to get it right, and I would like to double check it in the summer. Okay, as for other ways of charging it, super eat, sub cool, uh, discharge temperature, those are all ways that you can charge these things. Uh, a lot of it depends on whether it's TXV controlled or it's fixed orifice. 
I'm going to do a series of videos trying different ways to charge these things. And uh, I'll show you the results and we'll see what we come up with. And I'll kind of compare that to uh, weighing in the charge. So the next few videos are going to be about charging the heat pump in the winter by various means.